Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to discuss my opinions on which Ezio game is the best of the trilogy. I will be covering the world, story and gameplay. The Ezio trilogy is widely considered to be the absolute peak of the franchise, and I feel quite excited to discuss which game is the best. Each game is amazing in its own way, and I feel I will have trouble truly deciding which is better by the end of this video. I would love to see your views in the comment section, but without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Assassin's Creed 2 takes us to Italy during the Renaissance era, where we play as Ezio at Atelier da Firenze. The main locations are Florence, Monteregionioni, Venice, San Gimmi Gignano, Forli, the Apennine Mountains, and the Vatican will become available to us much later in the game. I definitely enjoy exploring the locations in AC2 but I will admit that many of the locations lack enthusiasm. The towns and cities also seem so distant from each other, and I feel that Ubisoft Montreal could have added more locations onto the map. This takes us to AC Brotherhood, which is primarily set in Rome, with Monteregionioni being available to us after the prologue. I love Rome, the Palais of Rome feels so immersive. I certainly prefer just one big city with a few smaller locations on the outskirts, which Rome delivers on. There is just the right level of guards spread out across Rome, which can be fun if you want to test out your abilities or your assassin recruits. There are plenty of civilians around to make Rome feel ever more lively and compact. Constantinople in AC Revelations is certainly a downgrade from the beauty of Rome and even a city like Venice. Constantinople feels quite dull and lacks any real immersion for me. The size of Constantinople, which is said to be four times bigger than Rome, isn't a huge concern for me. The real concern for me is really just the lack of essentially anything. I think one of the only upsides for me are the markets and the random stalkers who come out and attack you at random. My conclusion is that Rome from AC Brotherhood beats any of the cities and towns throughout the trilogy. Rome is just too beautiful and compact to not be placed first. Of course, there is absolutely no hate towards the other locations in the trilogy. They just don't hold up as well. AC2 takes place in 1476, and we begin by following Ezio Aditore da Firenze as a 17-year-old young man. In the beginning, Ezio is a man living the high life. He comes from a wealthy family of bankers. He has a younger sister, a younger brother, an older brother, an uncle, and two loving parents. Ezio also has a girlfriend and runs a gang of sorts. Ezio's gang is enduring a rivalry against another gang run by Vieri de Pazzi. After catching a glimpse of Ezio's seemingly normal and happy life, things start changing for the worse. Ezio's brothers and father are kidnapped by Uberto, who was thought of as a friend of Ezio's father. Someone the family could trust. Ezio was instructed by his father to deliver documents to Uberto, which he did, the next day, Uberto revealed himself to be a traitor and told Ezio's family that he received no documents. He then proceeded to execute the majority of Ezio's family before his eyes. Ezio escorts his sister and mother to Monteregionioni, the family home where his uncle Mario lives. Mario trains Ezio and reveals that they are from a family of assassins. From here, Ezio begins his quest to hunt down the Templars, killing them off one by one and meeting many new faces along the way. By the end of the game, Ezio has gone from a young and rather naive young man into a 41-year-old trained assassin. This is where we see the peak of Ezio's character progression. He finds out that the man behind it all is none other than the Pope, Rodrigo Borgia. Instead of assassinating the man responsible for everything Ezio and his family had gone through, he decides to spare Rodrigo as killing him wouldn't bring back his family. That final confrontation really shows just how far Ezio had to come as a character. Ezio's character progression really comes to a halt in Brotherhood. While taking on the Borgia family as a whole, primarily Rodrigo's son, Cesare Borgia, Ezio is portrayed as being a lot wiser and much more calculating than in the second game. We see the side of Ezio essentially from the beginning of Brotherhood all through to the end, so all in all we don't see a whole lot of character progression. Brotherhood really focuses on Ezio facing the consequences of his actions, starting with Cesare Borgia invading Monteregionioni 
and killing Uncle Mario. Ezio gets injured in the attack and finds himself in Rome and reunites with his sister and mother. From here, Ezio sets up a base and with the help of his allies, recruits people to join his cause. Brotherhood ends with Ezio, now 47 to 48, killing Cesare and avenging his uncle. Revelations is quite different from its predecessors. We see a much older and wiser Ezio who now wants to put his old life behind him and move forward. And he wants the wisdom and secrets of Altair, Assassin's Creed 1's protagonist. We are first taken to Masia, the former base of operations for the Assassins. Not only is Ezio captured by a Templars, but he doesn't have the keys to access Altair's library. These events take us to Constantinople where Ezio is taken in by Yusuf, a fellow assassin. During his quest for the Five Keys, Ezio meets Sophia Sartor and begins contemplating a future with her. Our villain for Revelations is supposed to be Prince Ahmet. However, I barely remember seeing this man, and he never really felt immersive enough for me to conclude that he was an interesting villain. Each time we find a key, we get to play through a flashback to the most notable points of Altair's life, post AC1. We see the tragedy that followed Altair, and how he eventually died at the age of 92. Revelations neatly tied together both Altair's and Ezio's stories, and how this was done left me feeling greatly satisfied. I personally feel that Revelations has the best ending of the three, with the second game having the best story overall. I feel that Revelations' story slightly beats Brotherhood's story through the sole fact that we got to play as Altair, and see some of the things that happened in his life post AC1. Now of course, I still greatly enjoy Brotherhood's story, I just wish we saw a little more character progression. And a better villain. I will conclude this section by stating that Assassin's Creed 2 has the best story of the trilogy. I will admit, the answer for this segment will likely be obvious. The gameplay is great in all three games, but Brotherhood easily stands out to me. In AC2, the gameplay is great, but Brotherhood improved on essentially everything. Everything is not an exaggeration, either. We got the assassin recruits, the crossbow, new and improved executions, and graphically, Brotherhood just looks better. Revelations doesn't do a whole lot to improve upon Brotherhood's gameplay. That isn't to say we didn't get anything new. A hook blade was added to one of Ezio's hidden blades, and we gained an ability to roll over enemies. The hook blade allowed us to climb and jump longer distances. Zip lines are scattered around Constantinople, which supported the hook blade. Other than these abilities, we didn't see many other improvements. So all in all, the obvious conclusion is that Brotherhood displayed the best gameplay of the Ezio trilogy. This is all just my opinions, of course. The Ezio trilogy as a whole is truly magnificent. I don't think I could ever really pinpoint exactly which Ezio game is the best. I would love to know what all of your opinions are down in the comments section. Also, let's get to 80 subscribers. We're so close. Anyway, without further ado, please enjoy your days and nights and I will see you all in the next one.